John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Eshin Lao 3 HD. This is the DJI Vista carrying edition. Watch this now, Bob. Watch the power. He just overpowers him, and he comes down, and then he shoves him right there. And interesting, uh, just how fun this little quad is. I really didn't expect much. Uh, I had uh, a little bit of the reviewer's curse on the original LAL 5 when it came out. It just didn't work right. I had too much static in the video. I could never get them to send me an update. So I was thinking this would be more of the same. Uh, and it kind of is in a little bit of ways, in the good ways. The design of this frame is actually very unique. It's not a copy of anything. It has these little sort of raptor feet uh, with some, you know, printed arm guards to match. I like that the arm guards actually have like a little bit of lower indention on that third toe. That gives you a little bit of landing pad to keep that bottom plate safe. Um, and one of the reasons you are gonna wanna keep it safe is this is a single bottom plate design. So if you crack an arm or any bit of this, you're kind of one and done, either looking for a new bottom plate or searching for a new frame. But at the price point that this comes in at uh, about 289 bucks, um, you know, considering that it's carrying a $150 Cadex Vista DJI HD video unit, um, that's actually not too bad. So quickly, let's go over what comes in here. You get two sets of props, purple and clear. I kind of mixed those on here. A uh, generous helping of zip ties. A uh, couple of these little carbon wrench, prop wrench thingies. And some M2 hardware. So once you get all that done, it has the similarly um, Ishin Lao. I don't know if it's a crown, I don't know if it's a paw logo on the top and bottom plates. This comes with, I believe it is a stack that's by Hack RC. It's a 25 amp ESC and an F4 flight controller. These ESCs are BL Heli 32, which is pretty nice for something at this small price point. Um, it comes with a connector with three wires already wired up. So when you put your receiver, if you're using an FR Sky XM Plus, which is what I did, um, everything is kind of wired for you. You just solder those three wires onto that and you are ready to go. Now one note, I did have some issues getting this up and going. Um, everything armed fine. There's only like two UARTs. So you have one for DJI and one for your receiver, right? So everything is kind of set up pretty well. The problem is uh, once I got everything bound, I wasn't getting the OSD data from the DJI system and Betaflight. And what that means is if you don't have that, you can't get out of low power mode, which means you can't record and you're basically like in a version of DJI version of pit mode, which is super low power output. You can't fly more than, you know, 50 feet or something like that. And I couldn't figure it out. I check, kept checking beta flight. I had my speedy B with me and everything looked right. So I had to take it home. From the factory, the two DJI MSP wires on the flight controller were reversed. What is this? Um, I really didn't think that was gonna be the case and I, I was talking to some of the local guys they were like try that I'm like I really don't think they would mix it up from the factory but mine was so if you have that issue try mixing those boards for me um, white wire on the left yellow wire on the right was the right one it was reversed um, when it got shipped to me maybe that's just reviewers curse not really a big issue it took me like you know 60 seconds to fix it um, the builds on these are actually nice. They use a nice cloth tape on the arms to hold the wires. These wires are meticulously measured at a very nice length that makes the build look very clean. The way that this is designed is kind of your traditional freestyle frame, but with a dead cat design, so you have no props in view. And uh, it flies pretty well. You, do, you can see this is a carryover from the original Lao 3 design. It was originally meant to hold like one of those Caddx um, Turtles kind of HD things. They use that same printed design. And because the lens on this sticks out a little further, they added this PLA. Or actually, this is also TPU. They had this other TPU lens protector to keep it safe. It's not the best looking, but it actually does provide a lot of protection. So I'm cool with that. 
Uh, comes with one Ishin strap for your battery. I've been getting about four-ish minutes on something like this, the 650 milliamp 4S pack. If you use an 850, you could probably get more like four or five minutes of you know freestyle. I was surprised at the quality of these motors. These are an Ishin Lao 3 branded gold motor. This is a 1408 3750 kV, so perfect for 4S. Uh, while giving you a good enough amount of power and some decent efficiency. It's a Racer Star branded prop. I don't know what's up with that. It looks very similar to kind of like one of those old gym fan flash props, but with a little bit of a heftier um, prop on there. It may be closer to like the three inch hulky kind of. It gives you a lot of punch. I really wasn't expecting this much power. I, I flew one of those ultralight five inches after flying this and it seemed under power. So you get a lot of punch, decent control. I didn't mess with the tune or the PIDs or anything out of the box because I think this is gonna be primarily a beginner um, HD kind of a thing or an extra quad, secondary quad, backup quad. And uh, the tune was great. I mean, I was getting no oscillations. It felt good. It has a good, like sort of a mid, size rates kind of like beta flight defaults which is mostly what i fly um so that's a good compromise between super low racing rates and super high freestyle rates i think a lot of people should kind of get very used to flying the defaults before you kind of branch out and find out what's going okay it comes with these little forever tubes for your receiver um i will know that if you're using the dji controller you're gonna have to add two wires to the vista unit it doesn't come pre-wired for those I never use that, so it's not a big deal, but just a note, um, it does hold this little Vista unit antenna pretty well on here, so I do like that. Um, I, I'm not sure if you could really get Crossfire on here. I didn't see um, the extra pads to be able to add that, but maybe you could. Um, so that part was a little unclear. It has some other connectors on here to wire up some other stuff. I couldn't really find any wiring diagrams on the on the website for this particular model. So that was a little bit frustrating. But good design. I think you could buy this. And if you have any worries about cracking the frame, um, swap it over to a Catalyst Machine Works Bangod. Um, if you happen to crack this, swap it over to an Armitan Gecko or any of these other three inch frames, or you could probably find this bottom plate too. It actually flies surprisingly well. I really didn't expect much as far as flight performance, but I was pleasantly surprised. Um, where do these DJI small three inch binder flies fit? Because you know, with an analog version of this, I would expect it to be around 150 bucks. So you add $150 Vista unit, it's actually a little bit cheaper than that which is good, but it still does put the price closer to 300 bucks. So are you better off, you know, building your own, uh, if you can afford the extra 50, 80, 100 bucks to build your own, um, for sure. But this is a nice way to get up and flying. Sometimes when you want to just get up in the air, it's really nice to buy a nicely built bind and fly. My recommendation if you're starting out is don't try to build your first quad. Build your third quad maybe. Um, get something indoors first of all so you can practice. Then once you're ready, get something small kind of like this. Um, because building your first quad, for some people you might get lucky. It might only take you five, six, eight hours. But for me and a lot of other people out there, your first one might take you 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours. Because there's always some kind of setting that you're going to have wrong or why you're going to get crossed somewhere you're gonna get stuck. And there are a lot better tutorials out now, today in 2020 than there were when I started, but I really think it's important to get to learn the enjoyment, the pleasure of flying and that before you go down that road. And so that's why this has a great place and a great price point. There'll probably be some codes to save a little bit more on this. So check the links in the description below. I'll put any codes right next to that. Good job on this one, actually, Ishin. Like, I really wasn't acting, expecting much, but it actually exceeded my expectations. This is a fun one. It really is. Thanks, guys.